Hello boys and girls and welcome to the first episode of my podcast, Tottenham Talk Podcast, otherwise known by absolutely no one as the TTP. But before we get into things, make sure to like and subscribe on your way in. Turn the notification bell on so you don't miss another one. So welcome to the podcast. All the latest news and talk regarding Tottenham Hotspur in the last week. In today's episode, we will be diving into Spurs FA Cup match against Morecambe, the midweek league cup game against Chelsea, transfer rumours and a fresh Conte update. So without further ado, let's get straight into things. So as you're watching this, it will be Friday. It will be Friday and I'm going to be uploading these every Friday. So Spurs weekend game in the FA Cup against Morecambe, we ended up running out 3-1 winners. It was not our comfortable ride, it was rather bumpy. We won 3-1 over the struggling League One side in a really just, we should be dominating this game and we weren't. It's worrying, it is worrying. I, it wasn't the whole second team, but it was a lot of the second team. And I'm just going to say, the second team really isn't good enough. You watch that performance and it is nowhere near the standards that these players should be playing at. We won, yes, but we'll be getting into it in a minute. But it was just it was just such a bumpy ride and we should be demolishing a team like this, even with our second team. So we went 1-0 down around half an hour into a guy, I can't even remember who the name was. But it's more com- didn't dominate, obviously, but you wouldn't expect them to. And we were at home. We dominated, but not in like a fantastic way. We created chances. We created plenty of them. We just didn't take them. We didn't We didn't take the chances that came our way. And just poor, poor finishing from the likes of Gil, Ali, the second team players. And Dombele was poor, gave away the ball countless times. And it just wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough from the second team. And they really need to improve and have a long way to go, those second team players. We ended up finally getting an equaliser around 15 minutes from time. Winks whipped the free kick in and it went all the way in. Similar to the Son one against Watford earlier in the season. But this one was, was whipped in and it was into the top corner. It was from like sort of a tighter angle. Winks just seems to score like accidental bangers. <laughs> he did it in the Europa League and he's done it again here. Yeah, we finally levelled it up. We finally levelled it up after so long. And then... Just the last 10 minutes after bringing Lucas and Kane on, both of them scoring, Lucas nicking the ball off a Morecambe defender going through on goal, around the keeper and tapping in for a simple finish. Then with only a few minutes left, Kane got a lovely goal. Emerson with a tackle on a Morecambe defender. And it was kind of lucky because the Morecambe player fell down and it sort of bounced off him and stayed in play. But you know, Emerson rewarded for good pressure. Then he passed it into Lo Celso, who then passed it into Kane, who on the turn just drilled it into the bottom corner. Really nice finish. But it's still worrying we had to bring on the likes of Kane and Lucas to get this win, because we shouldn't have to. And generally, we just have to play better in general. We just have to play better in general. It wasn't good enough in the second team, and I'd like, I'd, I want to see more from them. And a lot of them are young or inexperienced or have been injured. But is that really an excuse when you're playing a team that's in League One and is a, a League One relegation scrap? Like, come on. Like, Jesus, lads, you've got to be doing better. We did end up winning, which is the important thing, and we will be playing Brighton in the next round, so that's a very interesting one that will not be easy. Moving on, though, we have the second leg of the Carabao Cup tie against Chelsea that we played midweek. We actually played it yesterday. I'm recording this Thursday, uploading Friday. That's how I'm going to do these, pod- the, these podcast episodes. So yeah, we played on Wednesday. Uh, We lost 1-0. We'd lost 2-0 at Stamford Bridge and it wasn't looking good. We played horrendous in that game. Jesus Christ, like, ho ho. That was just one of the worst under Conte so far. It was terrible. We didn't have a game plan, but we're not reviewing that game. We're reviewing the 1-0 defeat. So we ended up getting knocked out by Chelsea 3-0 overall on aggregate with the 2-0 loss and the 1-0 loss. We didn't play terrible in this game. It's a sticky one. Started the game like, re- I wouldn't say really well. We started the game well. We started the game well. First, you know, 50 minutes we were we were attacking. We were putting intensity on Chelsea. We were looking like we could have got an early goal and got right back in this tie. But we just didn't have that cutting edge in attack. We didn't have that final play. All attacks, we just kept winning the ball. Chelsea couldn't really get out of their own half. We were pegging them back. And it was looking like we could actually score, but we every attack just broke down. Every time we got the ball back, which was often, every time we got it forward, we were just, the final ball wasn't there. The cutting edge was not there, even though we had one of our best teams out playing. We really needed Son in this game. We really needed Son in this game for that cutting edge, as well as Kane. 
but he's, he's going to be out for another couple of weeks, if not more. So we're going to have to find a way to cope without him because we're going to have to play the North London derby without him. We're going to have to play Leicester without him. I think we've got Chelsea again. We're going to have to find a way of playing without him because we're not going to have him for some crucial games coming up. So yes, yeah, starting well but didn't have a cutting edge. Then Chelsea got a goal around 20 minutes in. Rudiger header. I mean, Gallini. What was he aiming for? The sun? He literally came out, punched it, and decided to punch some CO2 oxygen instead. And then Rudiger just nodded in. Oh, it was pain. It was pain. That was us 1-0 down. And then after that, it started to crumble. Chelsea were just easing into the game um, a few minutes before that goal. And then afterwards, they were looking comfortable for most of, most of the half. Second half was relatively decent and I think all of the controversial bits came in the second half of the game if I'm not mistaken. We had two penalties overturned, one I think was a foul and then was put for a free kick and then another one was in the box but they just said it wasn't a foul at all. One from Rudiger and one from Kepper I believe. I didn't actually watch this game. I watched the first like 15 minutes and once we conceded I literally gave up. I, I'm sorry I was just not having it. So that goal so that, is, that was two penalties overturned, which was very frustrating, but I think they were the correct decisions. Then it got even worse, the rubbing the salt in the wounds, as I'm pretty sure literally a couple of minutes after one of the penalties got overturned, we got a goal disallowed as well, Kane marginally. But again, I think that was the right decision. Like, okay. VAR has been so bad. We all know VAR has been so bad over it's opening three seasons, all right. Why does it decide it's gonna work now when we need goals? It decides it's gonna work now. It's actually mad, madders, madders. It decides to what is typical, it's typical. Why does it decide to work now? Goodness sake, man. I bet it will be like really good for the North London derby and we get two goals disallowed or something. Honestly, we're screwed for the North London derby, lads. I'm not going to lie. We are actually fucked. Yeah, 1-0 second leg defeat makes it 3-0 on aggregate and we're out of the cup in the semi-finals. It's just 2019 repeat. Like, God's sake. Oh, I just despise Chelsea. They just always beat us, man. We can never beat them. We can never beat them. We've won like one of our last like a million games against them. I was going to actually state the real fact but then decided to say a million. Hey, I feel like I need to move on from this uh, topic because <laughs> I'm getting triggered, all right? From on the field to off the field as we move to some transfer business as we are interested in quite a few players at the moment. The big headlines, Triore we are heavily interested in and I think this one could go either way. This could end up being really good or really bad. I don't think wingers are our priority at the moment. We have plenty of them and plenty of talented wingers. I don't think it's our main priority we should be going for, but it would be a nice signing. Traore is still quite young. I think he's 24 or 25 still. We obviously know he's got electrifying pace and is Hulk-like strong. So that would be really good because honestly, we do need stronger, more dominant players. Like, we do have a lot of weak players in our team. We need more strong physical players, to be honest. And this could work up being quite good. Honestly, work on his finishing and maybe crossing. And this guy could be like legit really good. Like get Kane and Son practicing with him for finishing. Get his finishing up and he could be a really good player. We all know it's his finishing and final third play he lacks. So that's that's literally all he lacks pretty much. So just get, get that improved and this could be a really good signing in the end. I'm kind of wanting us to get over the line. It could be... A little, a little surprise uh, signing there, but I think I would like to see us do this, you know. I think this could end up being a good signing and I'd be excited to see if it goes through. Another one is Lingard. We've been linked with Lingard. Now, I do not want this going through at all, right? I know he went on loan to West Ham and everyone wanted to shout. I know he went to West Ham and did so well, but I don't want him here. I don't think he's going to be that midfielder, that creative midfielder that we need with now and Dombele looking like he's bound to exit. I don't think Lingard is that player that we need, lads. He's not the player we need. He doesn't need a more lethal attacker. We need one that's already just better, maybe even younger than Lingard. 
Lingard's not the one. He's not the one. He's aging as well. I think he's 30 now or something. And despite playing well for West Ham, he's not the one, lads. He's not the one. It'd be cool to see him maybe as a backup or something. But I think like players like Lacelso and that can be a backup already. We need a starter and we need a class starter. We can't be signing players like Lingard. This has been problem. This has been our problem over the last ages because we just we just make these mediocre signings like this. And we need bigger signings. We need to do bigger things with our money. Levy, man, Levy is Levy is the problem. But I'm not ranting over Levy today. I've already ranted enough about the Chelsea game and VAR. So we're gonna stop with that. Another one is the fridge. I like this one a lot. This would be a really good signing. Conte obviously working with him previously before at Inter. Did wonders with him, obviously. And yeah, he's worked with him before. Obviously, Conte has brought the system he used at Inter, which De Fridge played in, to Spurs. So if De Fridge was to... Sorry, we said that name's just ridiculous. If De Fridge, I think that's how you say his name, comes to Spurs, he'll automatically slot straight in, know what he's doing. It'll just be a little bit of a different surroundings, that's all. And he'll slot straight in. He knows how the system works. He knows how Conte works. He's worked under him and his system before. So it will be a perfect, perfect fit. And yeah, he's, he's a class defender. Obviously, we were wanting Skriniar like a year ago. He's literally the exact same, like they're both literally the exact same flipping player, lads, like come on now. Great experience as well in that back line and we'll just improve it massively. And I would be so happy if we got this signing done. Lastly but not least is a striker backup. Conte wants a striker backup. He expressed it in the press a day or two ago and it was obvious. We need a striker backup. We need a young striker backup that can already finish. One that is already decently developed, uh, young, and that can back up Kane. Because Kane, despite how good he is and how better he's got under Conte, he's not gonna. He's done it consistently in the past, but he's aging, lads. He's aging, and we've seen him dropping off this season as well, despite having been performing well recently. He's not gonna be doing this week in week out. We need to give him rest. He'll be even better if we can rest him. We, we need that striker back up just to give Kane a break. He can't just keep playing game in, game out. And if he does get injured, we're screwed because we don't have one. We don't have a striker back up. We need one. We desperately need one. And I think hopefully we can get one. Final topic of this first episode of the podcast is a Conte update. Now, this is very interesting. We know he wants full control over transfers. We know he wants to decide who they're going to get the money they're going to pay, all of this, all of these aspects of the signings. He wants it all. He wants full control. He wants Levy to not play too big of a part in it. He wants full control. And the interesting thing, I don't even know if this is true, but if it's true, we could have a real problem here because apparently Conte may walk, may leave the job after six, not even six months, not even half a season, if he does not get full control over the transfers. So, Levy! I'm not ranting over Levy today. We're doing it again, we're doing the ranting again, I don't care. Levy, man. If you, this is one of our biggest managers you've brought in, all right? And it's working, we can see it's working. If you do not give him the budget, he needs to one, make us better, and two, stay at the job, give him the money. I don't care, you Voldemort midget looking ass. Give him the cash. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you feel. Give him the money. I don't care. Okay? I want him at the club. He can rebuild this club. It might not be soon, but I don't give a shite. Give him the money. Give him full control over transfers and let him do his job. We've seen it at other clubs. He's rebuilt them, yes, but he needs the money. That's how he works. If you don't give him the money, it's not going to work. He's going to leave. We're going to be screwed. I'm going to be depressed and I'm going to support Charlton Athletic. <sighs> That's the last run of the... It's the last run, man. It's the last run. It's the last of it. I don't know for this first episode anyway. I mean, I think it's going to be a pretty common occurrence over this podcast. Right, over, over, over. Right, I think that's going to wrap it up for episode number one of the podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to start this podcast going. 
and it's going to be really good. Uploading every Friday for this podcast. Hopefully, if I miss out, I will inform you why. If I don't inform you why, it means I've been lazy and can't be bothered. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.